Okay, Applejack should not be able to do that. Should she? Let's find out. We've seen throughout My Little Pony that the Apple family's primary way of retrieving their namesake fruit is through a process called apple bucking. As dirty as it sounds, it really just amounts to kicking an apple tree until the apples fall off, whereupon they either land conveniently in a basket or have to be picked up off the ground. As you could probably tell through common sense, if that live action intro didn't teach you anything, this doesn't translate over to us humans very well. Even if we were to ignore the fact that it's nigh impossible to even budge your average tree with your own body strength, there's also the fact that apples aren't exactly loosely attached to their branches. Their stems are actually rather thick and strong, sometimes even as thick as the branch itself, hence why we have to pick each one individually. But the ponies must be doing something right that we are missing out on. So today in the lab, we're going to dissect the process of apple bucking to figure out just how they do it. First, we need to figure out roughly how big these apple trees are. To do that, we need a sense of scale. The easiest thing to compare them to will be a pony, naturally, so let's hop away from apple book season and over to wintertime for a moment. In Hearth's Warming Eve, we get the 8-foot candy cane scene. By taking a screenshot of this cane and rotating it to stand straight up, we now have a way to measure pony sizes. The easiest thing to do would be to measure Scootaloo or the other filly with their tongue stuck to the cane, but their positions mean the result will be inaccurate. So instead, we'll compare it to this mare in the background. It's rather complex to explain how you can use a foreground object to measure a background one, so just trust me when I say I figured it out. Excluding the mane, this one mare measured in at 3.1 feet tall, or roughly 0.95 meters. Since almost all mares are the same size of proportions, we can assume that this is essentially the universal height for the average mare. My little pony indeed, considering a pony is any horse under 14.2 hands high, 4 feet 2 inches, or 1.27 meters. Isn't that something? Anywho, now that we've just jossed a ton of fanfics, let's get to measuring that tree. Grabbing a screenshot of the first instance I can find with both a fully upright pony and an entire apple tree on screen, the actual tree, as in the wooden part, not counting the leaves, measures up to about four and a quarter ponies, which by my estimates is roughly 13.175 feet tall, or 4.02 meters. And while we're at it, let's find the width of the tree. Since the base is thicker than the rest of the trunk, we'll find both a maximum and minimum thickness for the trunk itself. The maximum thickness is about 78.6% of a pony, 2.44 feet or 0.74 meters, and the minimum thickness is about 32.9% of a pony, 1.02 feet or 0.31 meters. What does this tell us? Well, nothing specific, except for the fact that equestrian apple trees are a lot shorter and thinner than ours. The average height of an apple tree on Earth is 20 feet tall, almost a full 7 feet taller than equestrian. That's almost a difference of one Peter Mayhew. Peter Mayhew? Guy who played Chewbacca? Anyone? Okay. This actually solves our problem very quickly. If the trees are smaller, then it stands to reason that the apple stems would be smaller as well, so they could be knocked loose with less force than it would take for an Earth apple tree. But how does that help? If ponies can't buck hard enough to even budge the tree, that's not going to help them with their harvesting. So we need to figure out just how strong you have to be to buck one of these trees. Let's take into account Best Pony. Using the famous every episode intro, if we take a look at the clip of Applejack bucking a tree, we can examine her tactic and approach. Rather than just kicking randomly at the tree, she curls up her body like a spring, and when she kicks, she gets the tree at the very end of her kick. This allows her to put in the most power possible, since she's gained the most momentum she can before stopping. Think of it like Newton's Cradle, you know, those toys everyone had with the metal balls and strings and you make hit each other. If you pull one ball back a short bit, when it collides with the other balls, the one on the end is only moved a little. But the more you pull it back, the more force and momentum it carries, so the farther the ball on the other end swings. So we know her technique is on the money, now let's see just how strong she'd have to be for it to work. When she bucks the tree, the tree wiggles, indicating she's hit it hard enough to move it. So we need to figure out the force behind her kick. Since force equals mass times acceleration, we need to start off by determining the weight of the tree and the speed at which she kicks. Using the data we recently acquired involving the size of the tree, we can compare it to real world trees and their weights. 
Assuming the equestrian tree is more or less a perfect circle, we can keep its diameter at the 1.02 to 2.44 feet from before, but first we need to know which one to use. In the intro, Applejack bucks near the bottom of the tree, not quite at the base, but almost there in one of the thicker parts. So for this scenario, we'll use the 2.44 feet diameter, or 29.28 inches. Doing the calculations using the width of the tree, this means that the tree would have a weight of roughly 5.35 tons. 5.35 tons! That's 10,700 pounds! But hold it! Let's double check that figure. Obviously not all trees with a diameter of 29.28 inches are going to be almost 11,000 pounds. We need the height as well. So, double checking the calculation with the height from before, 13.175 feet or 4.02 meters, we get 0.78 tons. That's only about 1,560 pounds. Heavy, but not nearly the level we were almost led to believe. To compare it with something you're more familiar with, the average car weighs in at anywhere from 1.5 to 2 tons. So imagine half a car. That's basically the same weight as an equestrian apple tree. And just so it fits right in as our mass, let's convert it to kilograms real quick. These trees weigh in at 707.604 kilograms. Not a low number by any means, honestly, but kind of lackluster if you had my expectations. Now, the acceleration. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Going back to the intro, it takes Applejack 0.1 seconds to go from curled up to connecting with the tree. For any of you fellow video editors out there, here's another perspective. In my editing program, Movie Studio Platinum 12, this lasts three frames. And once again, using pony height to determine the distance her hooves travel, we're left with 2.25 feet, or 0.686 meters. So that's 0.686 meters in 0.1 seconds. That's a lot of points, so let's get to calculating properly. Since 0.1 times 10 equals 1, we have to do the same for the distance, meaning our hooves clock in at 6.86 meters per second. That's 15.35 miles per hour. Compare that to the world's fastest human kick on record, which is about 69.75 miles per hour. Squaring that calculation just gives us 6.86 for acceleration, meaning we can finally find the force. By multiplying the mass by the acceleration, we have determined that the force behind one of Applejack's apple bucking kicks is... 4,854.16 Newtons. Confused? Don't worry, I've prepared some examples so you can understand. One Newton is the force of Earth's gravity. 4,800 Newtons is equivalent to almost two and a half tons of pressure applied downward. So if Applejack bucked you in the chest, the force your body would take would be just barely under having a school bus dropped on you. And if she aimed a little lower... Well, let's put it this way. The average guy's testicles can't withstand any more than 120 to 200 pounds of pressure, and this coup could add up to almost 5,000 pounds. I'll let you imagine the pain and humiliation yourself. But now, things are getting confusing again. It takes about 4,000 newtons of force to fracture the human femur, which is the strongest bone in your body. So a kick from Applejack will most definitely crack it and probably obliterate anything else she targeted. Including the apple tree. You know how in martial arts there'll be that guy who breaks a wooden board in half with his hands? Well, imagine a board with a base of 0.14 meters and a thickness of 0.015 meters. The minimum force required to break this board in half is 856 newtons. Now, let's calculate in our tree. Being 0.74 meters thick and with Applejack striking along the larger side, rather than, say, coming in from above or below, it would take 4,536.8 newtons of force to snap the tree off right at the spot where she kicks it. Keep in mind that an average buck from Applejack is over 300 newtons stronger than that and you'll start to see the problem. Applejack might be a skilled apple farmer and well experienced in the field, pardon the pun, but she's too strong for her own good. Those trees shouldn't just shake and wiggle when they get hit, they should completely fall over. And the worst part? The apple still wouldn't fall off. With Applejack hitting so close to the bottom of the tree, by the time the force reaches the branches with the apples, they will have spread out and faded so much that she'll be lucky to jostle one or two apples from their perches, let alone an entire tree's worth. And forget the apples, if she kicked a tree with that much force, the bones in her legs would probably shatter since that much force is more than enough to break the tibia and fibula, let alone all the smaller, weaker bones in her legs. So the problem with apple bucking was never a question of being strong enough, it was a question of being too strong. The trees wouldn't be able to handle that much force, but the apples would be able to take the vibrations no problem, being completely counterproductive. The producer of the fruit would be destroyed, and the actual fruit would be crushed by the tree when it falls, leaving barely anything to harvest. So when they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, they're being optimistic. The apple doesn't fall at all. Or is that acorns? Whatever. 
Anyway, now that I've picked apart the mechanics of apple bucking, I need to go get a cast. So until next time, remember, don't kick trees. If you don't break them, they'll break you. See ya!